At the beginning of the Kirby Smart era, Jacob Eason was supposed to be the quarterback who saved the program. He was a five-star recruit from Lake Stevens, Washington, and looked like a future NFL stud who would do damage for three years in Athens. Except after one season, Jacob Eason would get hurt and would end up having to leave to go to Washington because he got beat out by a true freshman by the name of Jake Fromm. Jake Fromm was also a big-time recruit who was a Georgia boy at heart, and he ended up having a star-studded career with the Georgia Bulldogs, but ultimately was not able to make it in the NFL, and would go down as a tad bit of a disappointment while in a Georgia uniform. In today's video though, I want to talk about him. We're going to go through how he became a huge recruit, how he was at one point anointed the savior of Georgia football, and ultimately why he fell off a little bit at the end and could not make it in the NFL. I remember him being so highly touted, but now, just a couple years later, he went from a Georgia superstar to out of the NFL entirely. So what happened to Jake Fromm? Today we're going to do that. But before we get started, if you're a big fan of college football, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you can support today's video, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I can cover next. Now let's get started and talk about what happened to Jake Fromm. So in order to understand how Fromm got to this point, we need to go back in time. Warner Robins is an Air Force town. It's a place where flags seem to fly a little bit more proudly, and discipline is the undercurrent that silently moves throughout the city. Since World War II, it was home of Robins Air Force Base, which was the largest employer in Houston County, and that is the town in which Jake Fromm grew up in. The Matthew Stafford era at Georgia produced some of the most exciting times in recent Bulldog memories, and Jake Fromm at the time was watching and mimicking the dogs as much as he could. He said, quote, I remember just being in the house and watching Stafford, Sean Moreno, and AJ Green go out and play, and I remember the Sugar Bowl where they played Hawaii, and then going in the yard and just trying to be like those guys and as good as those guys. In middle school, Fromm was starting to show that it wasn't out of the question that he could be as good. His first national exposure in sports came on the baseball diamond as he hit three home runs and knocked in eight RBIs while striking out 11 of 18 batters in the 2011 Little League World Series. Warner Robins lost in the United States semifinals, but Fromm's prowess to perform on the biggest stage was starting to be noticed. His most notable influence was on the football field at Houston County. The school, which started playing football in 1991, had only one 10-win season to its name. The Bears were typically the sacrificial lambs in a football-crazed part of the state. But things would change. That was because of head coach Lassiter, who got Jake to play football. He said, quote, I went over to his middle school and got him out of a class where he was in 8th grade. At the time, it looked like he was only going to play baseball, but I brought him into the office and he assured me he wanted to play football and that he always had. He said he enjoyed baseball, but that he was a football player. Fromm's leadership skills were then on full display at the high school level, as he was always the first one at practice and the last to leave, Lassiter said. Early on in Fromm's career at Houston County, Lassiter said that one day he knew he'd be the quarterback that would head off to the NFL. Part of that was his ability to play the game of football, as much of it centered around Fromm's professional attitude from practice to the weight room and throughout each and every game. His coach said, quote, He is special with the talents that God has given him physically, and when you add his mental side to it, it really takes it to a different level. He is the hardest worker on the field, he's everything you think a professional quarterback should be, and that has been with him since the day I met him. It was no surprise and never a doubt that he'd be playing in the NFL. He ended up throwing for 3,629 yards, 31 touchdowns, and 5 interceptions as a sophomore, and that came off of a freshman season in which he threw for 1,100 yards. Fromm and Houston County had turned many heads, but college recruiting is a very different ballgame, one that is often difficult to understand. While he did have an impressive turnaround at Houston County, it wasn't enough for UGA to offer Fromm a scholarship, and that would confuse many. Brian Schottenheimer at the time was the OC for Mark Richt, and he was in charge of identifying and recruiting the quarterback position to Athens, and he was supposed to find the guy after after Jacob Eason. Nearly nothing in that process went all too well, as Fromm was passed over time and time again, and Jake had to go in a new direction. His head coach said, quote, Jake wanted to be a Georgia. He grew up a Georgia fan and always wanted to be the quarterback of Georgia, but he didn't have an offer from them. As a junior, Fromm ended up throwing for 4,000 yards, 36 touchdowns, and he led his team all the way to the state quarterfinals. He ended up being named the Gatorade Player of the Year, and he was really becoming a huge name in both the football and recruiting world. Fromm ended up becoming the fourth prep quarterback in the state to pass for 4,000 yards in a single season, and after his junior year, he had nearly 9,000 yards to his name and was fourth in state history. He put up gaudy numbers during his four years and is still in the top five in all-time passing yards for high school football there. He finished in total with 12,817 yards, 116 touchdowns, and only Deshaun Watson had more than him. He was also an Army All-American, and this was a huge deal to him. He said, quote, I came from a military-based town with a lot of pride in our military. Playing in this game is something I did not take lightly. 
I remember my freshman year in high school watching the Army Bowl on TV, and it is incredible to experience and really a dream come true. I've always wanted to play in it, and I'm excited to be getting the chance. So yeah, wait, this guy was insane, but where was he to go to college? Well, in 2015, he earned an offer from Alabama, and both Ole Miss and South Carolina were among his favorites, but he chose the Crimson Tide. Coach said, quote, He can process information faster than anybody I've ever been around. They're just getting an overall good person and a great player. But things would change. Nick Saban suspected this phone call was on the way at one point. It was the spring of 2016, and the 478 number flashed on the Alabama coach's cell phone, and he knew it was Jake Fromm. It was time for Jake to end things. Saban picked up, and the senior said, quote, I did one of the hardest things I've ever had to do at the time. Fromm then said, quote, We talked anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. It was pretty long, and it was tough to tell him that I was coming to Georgia, and I'm sure he didn't like that very much. Fromm said that Jake met with the Georgia staff, and ultimately he wanted to follow Coach Smart, who was coming into Georgia. And just like that, Fromm was riding down a two-lane road home to Athens, and Smart had won his first real head-to-head -head recruiting battle with Nick Saban, and it would not be the last one between Smart and Saban. But it was a huge one. Jake's little brother Dylan said, quote, I really think Jake loved Kirby a lot, and when Kirby went to Georgia, that had a lot to do with Jake going to UGA. Fromm said once he gave his commitment to the Georgia staff, that was the end of it, and that he was a bulldog. Ultimately, that inept offensive coordinator held things back, but he would end up where he was always supposed to be. Kirk Herbstreet said, quote, Jake Fromm's story is incredible. Everybody's thinking that Jacob Eason is going to chase the kids away, and here comes Jake Fromm. Alongside that, Jake was pretty well known in the media because he was on Netflix's QB1 Under the Light series, and according to 24-7 Sports, he was a four-star recruit, the number two pro-style quarterback, and the 51st best player in the class of 2017. So how would Fromm end up doing at Georgia? Well, let's take a look. Jacob Eason was supposed to save Mark Rick's job at Georgia. He was a hotshot five-star in the next big thing, and was next in line in terms of big-name quarterbacks imported from a different state to bring Georgia back to the promised land. In his first game, Jake Fromm was obviously the backup to Jacob Eason, and Fromm's head coach in high school asked Jake if he should come to his first game to see him play. Of course, there was no telling when that first college snap would come, but Fromm felt pretty sure it wouldn't come against Appalachian State. His high school coach said, quote, He said he didn't think he would get in unless there was an injury or the score was lopsided, so he stayed home. App State usually doesn't let it get lopsided. Emerson and Lee Fromm were sitting in their seats around the 40-yard line when Jacob Eason scrambled out of bounds on the eighth offensive play, getting hit late and coming up limping. Eason injured his knee, and their son Jake's moment was suddenly here. The job he did was great. He completed 10 of 15 passes for 143 yards and a touchdown and led Georgia to a 31-10 victory. All of a sudden, Jake Fromm was the guy. The next week, he'd be thrown into the Wolves, as on the road against number 24 Notre Dame, Fromm ended up throwing for 141 yards and a touchdown as they beat the number 24 ranked Fighting Irish. A couple weeks later, he helped them beat number 17 Mississippi State, they blanked Tennessee 41-0, and beat Mizzou 53-28. The first half of the season had gone tremendous, and Jake Fromm was somewhat becoming of a sensation now. He was a little bit better than a game manager, as he only threw for three touchdowns or more once in the regular season, but he ultimately would help them beat Florida, South Carolina, Kentucky, and Georgia Tech, with their only loss coming to Auburn in early November. Ultimately, they would face off again with number two Auburn in the SEC Championship game, and this time Fromm threw two touchdowns and a win. Georgia was going to the college football playoff, now behind a freshman quarterback, with the help of DeAndre Swift and Sonny Michel, and they would win 54-48 in double overtime in one of the best college football playoff games ever. Jake Fromm was then pretty much on his way to being the best freshman quarterback in program history, as they were beating Alabama. Except ultimately, the two of second and 26 play happened, and Georgia had to heartbreakingly go home. Fromm had two interceptions in that game, and that was tough. In total, Fromm finished with 2,600 yards with 24 touchdowns and 7 interceptions. Going into 2018, Fromm was expected to get even better, and he did. He ended up throwing for two touchdowns in their early win against Austin P, and then had three touchdowns in games against both Middle Tennessee and Mizzou. He was getting better and better, as he had three touchdowns and a win over Vanderbilt, had three touchdowns and a win over number 9 Florida, and then also helped them beat a top 10 Kentucky team and a top 25 Auburn team. He threw for a career high four touchdowns and a win over Georgia Tech in the final regular season game, before he would then throw three scores and a loss to Alabama in the SEC Championship game. They'd end up missing out on the college football playoff because of that, and they would end up playing against number 15 Texas in the Sugar Bowl, where he threw for three touchdowns, but Sam Ellinger got the best of him and proudly said, we're back. In total, Fromm finished with 2,700 yards with 30 touchdowns and six interceptions, and if he could have one more big year in 2019, he could probably be a first-round pick, and surely he was going to get Georgia to a national championship game. Except it didn't exactly go according to plan. 
at least on paper. He ended up beating Vanderbilt in week one before he then helped them cruise the two straight wins over Murray State and Arkansas State, and then he had a great game in which he helped them beat number seven Notre Dame by six points. After that, he lead them to a road victory against Tennessee before a hiccup at home against South Carolina. Ryan Helinski and the Gamecocks walked into Athens and won this game in double overtime after Rodrigo Blankenship pushed a field goal wide. This was tough because Fromm had three interceptions in that game, and that was definitely the worst game of his career to this point, but he would bounce back. He helped them beat Kentucky, helped them upset number six Florida, helped them blank Mizzou, and then beat number 12 Auburn. Now he just had to win two more games to get them back to the SEC Championship, which is what he did. They beat Texas A&M, beat Georgia Tech, and then all of a sudden ran into Joe Burrow and the LSU offense. In that game, he ended up having two interceptions, and they lost number two LSU 37 to 10. Like the previous year, Fromm was not able to get them back to the college football playoff, and they had to settle for playing number seven Baylor, in which they won 26 to 14. That was Fromm's final collegiate game, and he threw for 2,900 yards with 24 touchdowns and five picks, and it was definitely a regression from the previous year. During his time at Georgia, he helped them to an SEC championship game, three straight SEC East titles, a victory in the Rose Bowl, and a win in the 2020 Sugar Bowl. He went 36-7 and as a starting quarterback, and the biggest reason for him struggling his final year was that they lost their top five wide receivers. Many were critical of his performance, but he was definitely a really good game manager and definitely a top 10 quarterback in the game. He ended up entering a draft class with names such as Joe Burrow, Tua Tungavaloa, and Justin Herbert, as they were all expected to go in the first round. In total, Fromm completed 63% of his passes for 8,000 yards and 78 touchdowns, with just 18 interceptions, but he was not perceived to have the same upside as most most of the peers in his draft class. There was also that whole Twitter thing where some old texts got dug up, but that ultimately didn't kill his draft stock as much as some people would have thought. The Buffalo Bills ended up finding their backup quarterback of the future, as they would draft Jake Fromm with the 167th overall pick. Fromm became the first quarterback they had drafted since Josh Allen in the 2018 draft. So from there, he really didn't get an opportunity to do much. He threw poorly at the NFL Combine, he ended up playing with Buffalo for one year, had a stint with the Giants in 2021 where he started two games and threw for 210 yards, and really struggled in that. He then joined the Commanders in 2022, and then was with the Lions this past offseason. He then goes 6 of 8 for 89 yards, but was ultimately cut. That same draft class had just one quarterback chosen between pick number 26 and pick number 122, and that was Jalen Hurts. That becomes a little bit more important later. So why did Jake Fromm not really get a chance in the NFL, and what the heck went wrong for him? Well, first and foremost, he probably should have returned to Georgia for his senior year. He was never expected to be a first-round pick, as he had a pedestrian arm and was kind of lacking in some physical traits, and he should have came back for one more season. His offensive coordinator his last year was also not great, he didn't have a good receiving room, and he probably should have done one more season. His scouting combine performance buried him in a hole that he could not escape, as teams were not willing to pour as much resources in developing him, and his draft stock fell because of that. He also came during the infamous 2020 season, in which everything was thrown on its head. He wasn't able to make in-person visits or do in-person workouts, and these teams had to rely on tangibles, hurting guys with elite intangibles like Jake Fromm. Obviously, his poor scouting performance did not help things. As one coach said, quote, he's a heady kid with a great football IQ and a winner, but probably slid because of a lack of arm talent. As I said, there was just one quarterback taken between pick number 26 and number 122, and that was Jalen Hurts. That was important because the NFL has adapted a mentality that you're either a franchise quarterback or pretty much not worth investing in and you're a backup. Jake Fromm fell into that category and was just never able to get the resources that he needed. He came off of a senior season in which he somewhat regressed, he kind of peaked early as a freshman, never really got that much better, and didn't have the arm, physical tangibles, or didn't come in in the right draft class to really make up for it. I guess you could say he did have an opportunity with the Giants for two games, but were they ever really going to give him a chance? That I don't really know. I guess ultimately he could have performed better in his time there and could have shown more, but Jake Fromm will go down as a cautionary tale in a way. He was a great and memorable college quarterback for Georgia. I think if he would have been in a more modern and NFL type system, Fromm could have gone higher, and I also do wish he got more of a chance in the league, but ultimately he'll probably find something new and I wouldn't be surprised if he goes into coaching. It was a lot of fun to watch Jake Fromm take off at Georgia and his freshman season in 2017 was pretty special. And that is what happened to Jake. But what do you guys think? If you're a Georgia fan, why didn't Jake Fromm make it in the NFL? And do you think his potential and talent was wasted at Georgia? Be sure to let me know down below. Let me know what player I should cover in my next video. And before you go, don't forget to also leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.